So how do we detect these gravitational waves? Well, about 1.3 billion years ago, two massive black holes collided and made one supermassive black hole. And when that happened, it gave out a lot of energy in the form of a gravitational wave. Now, this gravitational wave itself, what it did is it kind of sent out ripples through the space-time. And effectively, these ripples, as space-time is kind of uh, stretched and compressed, have gone out throughout the universe. And what we have then is we have an array of detectors on Earth which actually detect uh, the change in the dimensions of the universe. So to detect these gravitational waves, what we need is a massive detector. And this is where LIGO comes in. Now that stands for Light Interferometry Gravitational Waves Observatory. And there are basically a couple of these things which are basically um, something with a laser at one end. We send a laser beam down two separate four kilometer long tubes in, in a vacuum, which are at right angles to one another. And what we can then do is see how much uh, maybe the, the dimensions change in this direction compared to this direction. So put simply, what we have is a laser. Now this laser fires out a beam of coherent light, and what we then do, we send it through a partial mirror at 45 degrees. What this means is some of the light gets uh, reflected this way, and the rest of the light continues in a straight line. Now at the other end, what we have is a mirror. And this is where you know there's a, such a, an amazing piece of engineering that's gone into you know, making sure that these mirrors don't move at all. So the ray of light comes out of the laser, it hits the mirror and then it bounces back. So it comes back down uh, just like this ray of light here. So it goes up and down a four kilometer long tube. What happens here is that when the two rays of light, if they are completely in, in antiphase as we call it, the wavelength of one uh, ray of light cancels with the wavelength of this ray of light here. And what we see then is that this ray of light plus this one here equal no light at all. Effectively, the top of the wave here cancels with the bottom, and therefore we don't see any light. And this ray of light basically passes through the mirror to our detector. But if we have a gravitational wave which is moving through the Earth, you know, perhaps from some massive event a long way away, what it's doing is actually changing the dimensions. And that means at some point, uh, this distance here is going to be less than that. What happens then is that rather than these two waves being in antiphase, uh, it shifts it along slightly. And what we might have then is some constructive interference. And what we see then is we get a, a, a signal in our detector. And the only way that this can happen is if we have a gravitational wave. Now, in terms of the distances involved, this is about four kilometers. And the distance that this has to move is about a thousandth of the diameter of a proton. This is the size of the, you know, the, the center of the atom, okay? So in terms of the distance moved, it is absolutely minuscule. And therefore, this is why it's taken so long, over 100 years, to actually prove that Einstein was right. But it's all based uh, on the work being carried out at LIGO, uh, at the various detector stations, and it's an international collaboration. Now, if you'd like to find out more about this, uh, I've put a load of links to very good videos uh, in the description below. So have a look at that, you know, try and, you know, just sort of test yourself and challenge yourself and have, you know, really kind of uh, look at this part of the most fascinating uh, physics that's happened for the last few years. Thank you.